read a story one time. It was a Tibetan view of hell in a particular scene. A group of hell beings are pulling this huge, heavy cart, and they're being whipped by the hell guardians. At the same time, they're struggling with one another, fighting, cursing. They're miserable, and they're making everybody else around them miserable as well. Suddenly one of the hell beings stumbles and falls, and the hell guardian descends on him, starts whipping him even more ferociously. And the hell being right next to him sees this and suddenly realizes, this isn't right. So he tries to stop the hell guardian. And at that moment he's freed from hell. The story goes on that he becomes a bodhisattva and eventually becomes our Buddha. But this really happened and I don't know, but it does illustrate some interesting points. One is that our sense of goodwill for others, our sense of compassion for others, does come from a sense of right and wrong. It was that second being who saw the one next to him stumbling and falling and being whipped for falling, and it didn't seem right. That's when our compassion goes out to others. They're being wrongly mistreated, wrongly harmed. And it's easy to see in some obvious cases, but it's good to remember that goodwill does come from a sense of right and wrong. It's not a non-dual teaching. Compassion is not a non-dual teaching. It comes from the recognition that there are right ways and wrong ways of behaving kind ways and unkind ways. So it's important to keep that distinction in mind. And secondly, the second being didn't have to help the first being. After all, the first being had been biting and cursing him all along. But it was at that moment when this second being noticed his being is suffering a lot. And I don't have to continue to, to contribute his further suffering. Goodwill, in this case, is a free gift. He didn't owe goodwill, didn't owe compassion to the first being. But he gave it. And this is something we should keep in mind as well. It's possible to go through life and think of all the wrongs that other people have done us. And you look around you, and it seems like everyone's in a contest to beat everybody else, to see who can be nastier, who can do the most harm. And from their point of view, people who show goodwill are simply losing on that contest. But who wants to be a winner in a contest of who can do the most harm? Because we all know where that leads. It leads down. So you don't hold your goodwill only for people who deserve it. In fact, you don't think about people deserving your goodwill. You give it as a gift. And in that way you free yourself. The more free the gift, the more free you become. So think of goodwill as a way of getting yourself out of that nasty back and forth that human life tends to be. We talk about how it protects you from doing unskillful things, but simply the act of having goodwill expands the mind. Remember, it's called a Brahma Vihara. Vihara means dwelling place. When you can develop this attitude, your mind is dwelling in a more spacious place. Brahmas live in extremely spacious places, no limitations, immeasurable dwelling. As long as there are restrictions on your goodwill, limitations on your goodwill, there will be restrictions and limitations in the sense of space within your mind. Because 
is the mind in which you're tallying up the score of who wronged you or who's going to go wrong you in the future. Is a very narrow mind, lives in a very narrow place, a very impoverished place. Whereas goodwill, as the Buddha said, is a monk's wealth. And monk here applies to everybody who practices. You can create an immeasurable dwelling for yourself. It's one of the three dwellings that the Buddha recommends. There's the divine dwelling of the mind and concentration, again, which is very spacious. There's the immeasurable dwelling of the Brahma Viharas. And finally, of course, there's the, there's the noble dwelling of the noble attainments. That's even more unlimited. The Brahma Viharas are still in space and time. They still depend on fabrication. Goodwill is something you have to fabricate, especially if it's going to be universal. Beyond that, though, developing goodwill is one of the bases for developing discernment. It leads to the type of concentration that is conducive to discernment if you apply it in that direction. From there, it liberates you to the noble dwellings. So keep these points in mind. Goodwill does depend on a sense of right and wrong, even though it's immeasurable. There's a certain dualism. Goodwill is better than ill will. Acts of kindness are better than acts of harshness, harmfulness. And secondly, they are a gift. A free gift. Remember that bumper sticker that I used to have about acts of kindness and random acts of kindness and senseless beauty. We're basically nice to strangers. It's not being senseless. It's senseless only in the sense if you think that what makes sense in the world is doing whatever you can to get ahead, being recognized for whatever favors you do to other people so you can take advantage of them. But just the free gift of kindness, the free gift of goodwill, makes a lot of sense in that it's freeing. It's in this way that by giving a free gift, you become free. And the freedom is immediate in the sense of spaciousness in the mind. And it lasts for a long time, but it does have to be maintained. You learn how to feed your goodwill. By reflecting on the, on the state of the mind that you've developed, and then comparing that with the state of mind that's in fear, in competition. And you realize you've got something much, much better. So we live in this world where it seems like everyone is running a race to the bottom. And the competition is over who can do the most harm. And we can free ourselves, though, from that competition. And in doing so, it's a gift to other people, and it's a gift to ourselves. Where does it come from? It comes from your desire for happiness inside. And it comes from being responsible for your happiness. This underlies the point that freedom and responsibility go together. And you think of that hell being. It was when the hell being took responsibility to help the other hell being. That's what set him free.